So, okay, next we get to the emulsion tubes. So what are they? Um, Weber referred to them as a brake. So it, it helps you, it helps the carb to suck air and fuel through at the rate that it's required, but it also mixes the air and fuel. Um, and and I'll, as I'll explain in a minute, um, some emulsion tubes will allow you more fuel through at lower RPM, and other emulsion tubes will allow you less fuel through, I say fuel, fuel and air mixture less through at a lower RPM. So you can, after your accelerator pump, let me, let me say this, you're idling, that's fine, you're now accelerating, you accelerate the pumps, pumps like I showed in the previous video. Now you, there's enough CFM for the next stage of the carby to work, where you start sucking air through the uh, uh, air jet and the fuel jet through the emulsion tube into the auxiliary, and now the accelerator pump and the idle circuit don't work anymore, um, and now you're cruising. So this, this is where, where that comes in. Um, and, and it allows you to have the right amount of fuel for that. So when you, when you accelerate, um, you can, through the emulsion tubes, have more or less fuel. Remember when you flat out, you're going to get fuel through that, the size of your main jet and your air jet. That's it. You're going to get, that's what you're going to get. But you don't need all that fuel at the lower RPM, at a lower, at a, at a lesser throttle position. So that's what the emulsion tube does. It, it, it allows you to, to have that amount of fuel through the holes in the side. I'll explain that on the board. Right, so I'm going to try and explain this. Imagine that's a side cut through of the carby. That's your choke. The injury sits there, I didn't draw it in. That's the channel where your emulsion tube sits in. The emulsion tube is that there. Uh, this is the float ball, the main jet sits in it, so that's the little main jet, main jet sits over there, and this is the air correction jet that sits on top. So the air correction on the Weber looks like that. Emulsion tube, they come in different sizes, I'll explain that in a sec, look like that, and the main jet look like that. So the whole idea is, when you, after you've, you're on, you're on idle, now you've pressed your accelerator, the accelerator pump sprays, the butterfly turns, you're starting to draw more air through there. So the air that you draw through there speeds up. There's your Venturis. I'll get to the Venturis in a minute as well. The air speeds up um, and, and it sucks air through here. That air that you suck through there, sucks air through the air correction jet and sucks fuel through there. So the fuel sits on the outside of the emulsion tubes. The air jets down in there, I'll make a better drawing of that in a minute. The air jets down in there and through the holes in the emulsion tube, through those holes in the emulsion tube, it emulsifies the fuel and you suck emulsified fuel through there and your car will be running. So no matter what size the emulsion tube is, you can only use as much air and fuel as the size of that air correction jet and the size of that main jet. Um, I'll explain that in a sec. So, okay. That, that there, let's say that there is the emulsion tube. The emulsion tube. That's your air jet, let's say it's a 180, and there's your main jet, let's say it's a 130. So no matter what size emulsion tube you've got, the maximum amount of fuel that you'll suck through is what a 130 will allow to go through. And the maximum amount of air that you can suck through is what a 180 air jet will, in this case, what a 180 air jet will allow you. Let's say that's the float level. So what happens, as soon as you press the throttle, air jets down here, moves down there, flies down there, and it wants to go out through the holes. See, it wants to go out through those holes. And as it goes out through the holes, because the fuel's lying there, it starts bubbling the fuel, if you can call it that, and the fuel in the air then, that's mixed, that's emulsified, goes through there, and it goes into your, into your auxiliary venturi, and eventually down the choke of the car. So if I can show you on this carby, 
the two emulsion tubes go in there, one in that hole and one in the other hole. The air jets go on top, like that. And the main jet goes right in the middle of the float bowl over there. And then your auxiliary venturi sits over there. Uh, the one for this carby is now in the ultrasonic cleaner, but I'll show you on a different one. That sits in over there. So you've got a hole through there. You've got a hole through there. And that got a hole down the bottom. So when air starts moving down the outside of the carby through there, it creates a vacuum. That vacuum draws air through the air jet and fuel from the bottom. And then the whole emulsification process happens inside that little chamber. And that's where you get that air fuel mixture from. So the difference in these emulsion tubes, you can see the F50 has got big holes, but at a high level. The F6 has got a series of small holes right down the bottom. And the F66 has got a couple of holes in the middle. So Weber explains these emulsion tubes, they say they call it a break. So it breaks the field. It's not break, it slows the field down. So with the F6, the minute you press the accelerator, the accelerator pump sprays, and your air starts moving through that emulsion tube chamber, this will let more fuel through at lower RPM. Because the air gets to jet down the hull, right down to the bottom and it emulsifies the fuel right from the bottom. So you get more fuel at lower RPM that, that gets emulsified. So this you would typically use on a, on a smaller engine with a, with a bigger carby to avoid a, a flat spot. Not the flat spot for your accelerator, the one just after that, I'll explain that in a sec. So on a, on a, on a, on a bigger engine with a smaller carby, you'll probably use that or that, the F66 or the F50. There's a whole guide for that. But that's the idea with these emulsion tubes. So if you want to put a nice big 36, 32, 36 or a 36 or something like that on a smaller engine like a A14 or a 1600 Kent or something, you would probably want to go for that because at lower RPM, the carby doesn't have the CFM to suck all that fuel through. It only That can only happen at higher RPM. But on a bigger engine, like a Ford V6 or something, you don't need that. You can put those in, they will work fine. Just to give you a simple example, that that I've highlighted in yellow are all 32, 36 carbs. That's a DGV, DGAV, they're all exactly the same carb. They're all on 1600 Ford Capris. They all have fixed Venturis, 26, 27, so you can't change them. The auxiliary Venturis change, those are 3.5, 7, there's a 4.5, 4.5 and 3.5 and the jet sizes are different, these 140s, 140, 135 and so on, 137, 125 um, and you, you've got to wonder why did they do that, look at the emulsion tube, different emulsion tubes they had in them, all exactly the same engine, so there's no fixed, look at the air corrections, different sizes, there's no standard to say that's the jet I'm going to put in your carb. It doesn't really, it matters, but it doesn't really matter. Whether you've got a 137 or a 140, you're not really going to notice the difference. You don't get 137s, you can't buy 137s in our country anymore. Um, so yeah, it's it's a fine art, but it's not that fine. If you, if you take, and if you take any of these carbs and you put it on a 14 for argument's sake, it'll work. 100% it'll work. Um, me, I prefer the F6 emulsion tubes, um, but there they've got the F50 on the first joke and the F6 on the second joke. I would have had it the other way around. I, I like the F6. It gives you a nice low down grunt. And then, but then you put, you put in smaller mains. Um, anyway, this was just for an example. That's what I did with the 32 DFM on the A14. I had 145 and 140 mains. Um, I don't think there was a 32 DFM. There's a 3236 DFV. It, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. So I showed you that jet chart just to prove to you or to show to you that it's not an exact science. 
like I said many times, you can probably put any, take any car, put it on any other vehicle about the same size, it'll work. Um, make sure that your engine runs fine, your timing and all of that's fine. And then put the carby on and see what it does. And hopefully the bits that I've shared through the couple of videos will help you to, to change your jets a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, change your air corrections a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. Um, I hope so. I really hope so. Um, I've, I've built many carbs and, and, and you build a 32, 36. I tested it on my A14. I built it for a guy with an A14. And there's no two carbs that's got the same jet seat. Some run better with a 135 and a 130. Some run better with a 130 and a 130. Uh, why? Because the vehicles and the carbs and the engines and stuff's not all exactly the same. Um, they, they, they're all mass produced. Um, there's no two, it's not a Maserati or something that, that's built by can Julio or whatever. Um, yeah, they're mass produced, the carbs are mass produced. So yeah, they're not, they're not all exactly the same. They, there are differences on them. And it's because of that, that um, the jetting is not the same. It could also be that on some of those carbs, they change the jets, because some of those carbs might have um, the power valve system in it and others might not have the power valve system so if you don't have the power valve system you can get away with a little bit bigger jets if you have the power valve system that'll help you get extra fuel um, but that's sometimes too much for the smaller engines so that could be that could be it. Um, I don't know so I think that's about it if you if you want to put a Weber or something on a car um, don't redesign the wheel Someone has done it before you. Um, in the 70s and 80s, there were a lot of Weber conversions done on all kinds of cars for performance, for fuel injection, uh, fuel injection, sorry, for fuel consumption and all kinds of stuff. And, and those, the jets that they used were recorded somewhere. So you will find it. Um, ask a friend, Google it, whatever, you will find it. Um, they, they put them on dynos and uh, and measured the emissions and everything and, and they brought it down to a real fine art um, so you don't have to redesign the wheel I mean it's been done so use that information and then hopefully the bits that I've put in these videos will help you to, to fine tune and then if you really have to you really want to take it to a dyno uh, you'll have to have a couple of spare jets and, and, and run it and, and see what it does anyway I hope this helps someone be safe